first, I didn't believe it either. Neither did I. Wait, did I miss the part where you explained what the hell you were talking about? Also, narration. Sometimes these gods have children with humans, called half-bloods. And Voldemort hates those assholes. Four of these children were headed to Camp Half-Blood. That's racist. Treetop weaponry. Also, with this insane kind of accuracy at whatever invisible distance this is, why not just throw multiple treetops? Something's wrong with this scene that I can't quite put my finger on. Probably because it looks fake as shit. As Talia lay dying, her father, Zeus, found another way for her to live. Anything but a tree. Anything but a tree. Ah, oh, shit. Also, Zeus has the power to turn his dying daughter into a tree, just not revive her as a normal living half-blood princess. A gift to ensure no one in Camp Half-Blood would die the same way. So check off thrown in the air through the woods as potential causes of death. All other causes of death are still in play. Also, you didn't want to put a protective barrier around the camp sooner than this? Zeus, damn it. Alexandra Daddario is so hot she makes my body hurt cliche. We like Stanley Tucci even though he's in everything, so Mr. Tucci, would you like to do a Sins video? We can't be any more of an asshole than Michael Bay is. Pierce Brosnan said, f*** this shit, and they got Rupert from Buffy the Vampire Slayer to take over. Zeus can play practical jokes like this, but can't save his daughter when she's fighting monsters. <laughs> Good sportsmanship. You recovered Aerith's stolen chariot. That was Clarice. Okay, what about the fall tournament? You own that sucker. Mm -mm. Somehow Percy's best friend doesn't remember that Percy didn't do these things. Good not talking to you. Again. Why the hell is Poseidon making the water ripple after his son walks away? Was there some falling out we didn't catch in the last movie? There's pretty much no reason to keep this character's identity under wraps, but sure, suspense, I guess. Is he messing with me? I think he's hungry. No, not him. I meant Poseidon. That's why you don't play the dumbass pronoun game. 100% of the people talking to Percy would have assumed he meant the Cyclops guy. With the annoying comic relief Grover provides, an entirely new character that's even worse is exactly what this movie needed. Bull. Excuse me? Smells like bull. All the characters in this movie were given vague lines of dialogue so that everyone could misunderstand them for hilarity or suspense. Why are there ready-made glasses of juice here? So that one could fall over and the filmmakers could make the point that something huge was coming? How did this mechanical ass bull smell like a regular ass bull to Tyson a minute ago? We have to find his weak spot. Because this is like playing the old video game Altered Beast. Also, wasn't Percy in the middle of the fire circle with the bull a minute ago? He even drew his weapon and everything. How did he end up here? Hey! Mechanical ass bull is distracted by normal ass bull things. There are clearly people running around the camp with no f***ing purpose. Why did the bull dig its horns into the ground when it could have just stabbed the shit out of Percy? Also, mechanical bull comes complete with gardening tools. <laughs> Why didn't you just do this in the first place? Hell, the guy's fireproof and everything. He could have saved the whole village, but decided to wait until it was dramatic. Hey, Rust Bucket! Rust Bucket. <laughs> this motherfucker is stupid. What, is he out of fire? Uh, no. While this camera angle makes it look like Percy hit a huge, wide area to throw this thing into the bowl and save the day, this is what that looks like on the outside. You couldn't throw a quarter inside this thing with any accuracy or strength, especially since you're up against a wall. Also, Mechanical Bull was created by the same dumbasses who built the Death Star. Everything in this explosion misses Percy. Luke carries around plot devices out in the open for no reason other than for Percy to see it and figure out what it is. You know, prophecy. I have a prophecy. Movies with vague prophecies suck ass. Oh my god. Yeah, they're pretty spectacular. Oh, you were making an exclamation and then putting a twist on it. Never mind. Zeus just doesn't have the power to keep his daughter alive, even in tree form. Luke poison the tree! I figured that out completely when I saw him carrying around that blue bottle for no reason. Luke let the bull in. It looked like the bull completely shattered the barrier, rather than being let in, but sure. Let's stick to that inaccurate account of the events. Also, it might have been in Luke's best interest to inform all the bad guys that he was going to poison this tree. And they could have destroyed Camp Half-Blood, but nah. You really should try and find some obscure mechanical bull to do the job. When you come back down, we'll talk some more. Assuming you're still sane, that is. Or I could just tell you this easy-to-remember prophecy myself and spare you the possible insanity. Oracle storage. They destroyed Coronas and banished his remains to the depths of Tartarus. Olympian gods took no more precautions than the people who buried Parallax. Only one half-blood child of the three eldest gods can defeat him. Because reasons. It's Olympus to preserve or raise. And that is raise with a Z, as in destroy, I asked. Oracle is perfectly ready to clear up grammar and spelling issues with the prophecy, but not provide answers as to what some of it means. That or Percy simply didn't ask. You are the only living half-blood heir of Zeus, Hades, or Poseidon. The prophecy could refer only to you. And because I'm sticking to this arbitrary rule that half-blood has to mean half-human in every context no matter what, we won't even bother to bring up the Cyclops dude. I'm surprised you want to go along with her on this, Mr. Undershirt. Underwood. Whatever. Nothing makes silly comic relief characters more hilarious than forgetting people's names constantly. 
Uh, we're, um, we're guarding too. I guess none of these guards have ever witnessed suspicious behavior before? Because I'm not going with the Cyclops. Let me guess, the monsters we saw at the beginning of the movie that killed Zeus's daughter were Cyclopes, and she mistrusts Tyson because of that thing that happened ten or so years ago? But that'll be some huge reveal later, I guess. It makes the mystical look normal. This seems made up so that Tyson could have two eyes and they could save on the special effects budget. Extreme makeover alert. <laughs> there just happens to be a mystical cab that takes mystical people places? How do you turn a profit running this kind of business? Tempest Split! This whole scene is one of the most obnoxious things ever put to film. I'm gonna go ahead and give it five sins. Oh, oh no, you did! Oh, f you. Didn't that prophecy say you're gonna make it till at least 20? Now we know why there's a mystical cab out of nowhere in this story. They have important prophecy information crucial to the plot. What do you know about the prophecy? Didn't you get the prophecy from the Oracle herself? What more information could they possibly have? I think we're in Olympus. Hail to you, great Zeus! Look, the guy who just rattled this off? The fleece is guarded by Polyphemus. Captured Odysseus? Lives in Circe land? Is not mistaking Washington, D.C. for Olympus. A extra shot of nectar. You mean there are mystical creatures everywhere just hanging out? Working at coffee shops? How did Grover know that this girl was one of them when she obviously didn't know that he was one of them? These guys are just waiting for Percy and crew in Washington, D.C.? What, do they have some sort of demigod GPS or something? Did they know the cab would randomly take them here and drop them off? We saw Luke use this earlier, but it seems a terribly useful device that could transport them anywhere they want to go at any time. Later we find out they're sailing to the Sea of Monsters. Why not just transport there? Luke has Grover. So Luke just happens to be looking for the exact same Golden Fleece Annabeth randomly researched on her iPad? Lucky for Luke, Annabeth figured this completely random thing out, because how else would he have been able to kidnap a satyr to help him find the fleece? Well, we don't know where he is. I know someone who does. I know someone who does, cliche. Also, this person is located in Washington, D.C., and he's just a short walk away. Amazing. Oh, man, they dragged poor Nathan Fillion into this, didn't they? You twist the cap off this, you release the winds from the four corners of the earth. So they accidentally came to D.C., Grover just happens to get kidnapped while they're in D.C., even though they never planned to go there. Luke's dad is in D.C. at a UPS store, and he just happens to have some magic plot device in his warehouse. Awesome. Luke's on a yacht called the Andromeda. It's passing by Chesapeake Beach as we speak. You mean Luke is, at this minute, close enough to track down? Imagine the odds. Percy reaches Chesapeake Beach, and they just happen to see Luke's yacht floating by in the distance. That's it. That's Luke's yacht. I can tell because I spent so many summers on Luke's yacht that I can spot it from a distance. So does Poseidon know a hippocampus based in the DC area? Or did he make this thing magically appear? Because he could have made him magically appear closer, you know? Sometimes you just gotta ask. All I've been doing is asking. This never gets resolved, by the way. We never find out why Poseidon hates Percy so much. You coming? Oh god, yes. Oh, you meant the journey. Forget what I said. Oblivious demigod bad guys are oblivious to other demigods in their presence, and no one saw the luck dragon approaching their vessel a minute ago either. She just happens to be and take a look at this random traveler's mode so that we can see that they have the remains of Kronos. Oh, you're just now smelling the intruders? Like you couldn't smell them before they went up the stairs? Right, the satyr. Well, he should be in the Sea of Monsters right about now. I sent him on ahead with some friends. You sent him ahead with some friends? Ahead of what? Why aren't you going with them? Aren't you going there anyway? Well, it's so important for you to be on the yacht right now. Also, you couldn't get a private jet to fly closer to the Sea of Monsters, and instead you just sailed the entire way down there? You obviously have the means, so why didn't you do that? Not to mention the magical transporting thing. It wasn't easy to find. I had to crawl through the depths of Tartarus itself, then Cleveland. That's hilarious. That explains so much. And it's amazing how American-centric these Greek gods continue to be in this series. Bad guys hung Annabeth's backpack nearby for no particular reason, instead of just throwing it overboard or keeping it in a safe place. <laughs> genius. Really. He can't use his water superpowers to bring that engine back up? Or have Percy do it? Really? We were told that this Hercules wind power thing called winds from the four corners of the earth, making it sound like this super impressive powerful thing. But it appears as though this is its only real use. Shouldn't he be blowing this yacht away right now? Just take it, take it slow. Does he have a choice in how slow this magical Hercules wind thermos works? The Cyclops killed her. Everyone else in the world would have just said a Cyclops killed Dahlia instead of playing the pronoun game. I should have used two hands. Or you could call on your dad to throw it back, or use Percy's water powers to get it back, or call Aquaman since he's not busy. What is this stuff? Prometheus. They prefer dead Confederate sailors whose lives have been given in tribute to Ares. But zombies is fine. Then why did all these other zombie dicks look up like Annabeth had just said the wrong thing? You should watch what you eat. Oh, f you. Just don't forget. Clarice talks in sentence fragments so that Percy has to ask what the hell she means by that. But instead of... Being able to read Greek, I can see map lines. Something that was never brought up until now, but plot. 30, 31, 75, 12. Hey, those are the numbers the taxi lady said. 
That's fortunate. Uh, Tyson, let go of my hand. Both of your hands were gripping the windshield just before this stupid remark. How did Grover get this disguise? And I guess Cyclopes are supposed to be dumb and half-blind, but can he not see the other two eyes that are obviously sticking out from under the fake eye? This is too dumb to be true. Half-blood! You can smell the half-bloods and you can see them at a distance, but you couldn't smell or notice the freaking satyr just because he put on a disguise? <laughs> yeah, she's dead. I mean, geez, she didn't break one bone or go unconscious or anything. Do that, please! Pointless demands. How did he know this was propping up the boulder? No matter what, convenient boulder is convenient, for sure. I didn't know you guys had it in you. Movie steals the villain gets there right after the item is acquired thing from Indiana Jones. Uh, no! Sure, sure, he's dead. I mean, unless you're five, you believe that. And speaking of Indiana Jones, here's a Raiders of the Lost Ark finale waiting to happen. Minus the roller coaster, this is the exact same thing. People tied to posts, large mysterious crate, guy who stole an important item from the main character. Yeah, I'd say this is darn near the same thing. Lord Kronos, he who was betrayed by his sons. Does this really require a ceremony? Also, why does putting the fleece on the crate bring Kronos back to life? Wouldn't you have to put it on his actual remains? Damn it! Did they leave him with his weapon? The water! It healed me. But not all the way yet, so that we can see the final touches of the Healy on screen. These assholes hug it out while the battle rages and Luke hasn't even been subdued or beaten up or defeated yet. Not to mention pull off the fucking fleece before Kronos comes back to life. He rises. Unnecessary explanations. These guys went to the Prometheus school of running away from things. The problem with this monster is that he lunges for victims in slow motion. Got out the slow motion, you might kill some fools. Well, don't just stand there, dude. Keep swinging. Your sword obviously works, so what are you staring at Kronos for? You want to know who gave me this sword? No, just start swinging it into his flesh. What the f*** are you waiting for? <laughs> Why doesn't he just throw Percy Jackson down to the ground like he scored a game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl right now? Grover is surely dead from this fall. <laughs> How did everyone hear blank on the monster that just got up and was about to stab Annabeth in the back? How did you miss that shit? Anyway, good thing they got that fleece, huh? Well, I think you should be the one who gets to do the honors. Instead of just throwing the fleece on the tree immediately, they had to go back into camp, show everyone they had the fleece, and then figure out who was best suited to put the fleece on the tree. This asshole tree could have died in that time. Finding out you have a destiny is a lot like finding out you have a half-brother who's a cyclops. It might not be as bad as you think. It was pretty bad. Wait, she grew as a tree all this time, but still grew into a teenager while petrified in the ground? Get the f*** out of here. Come on, come on, help her. The chick has a tree growing out of her. How in the world do you simply pull her out of the ground like this? Maybe the oracle meant Talia all along. What, are you aware that you're in a movie trying to get another sequel or something? No, the oracle did not mean Talia. A whole f***ing prophecy pointed to events that happened in this movie. Also, they left this crate out in the open? Sh that's worse than giving it the parallax treatment. Also, why is it glowing? If Kronos had the ability to come back to life without the fleece all along, why didn't he just do that? And why did his remains bother going back into the crate in the first place? Holy Zeus, I'm confused. I had to crawl through the depths of Tartarus itself, then Cleveland. You're happy. I hate that. A certain flower or a whiff of smoke can bring up experiences long forgotten. If it's to last, then, then the getting of knowledge should be uh, tangible. It should be um, smelly. Can I get uh, four venti half calf no whip lattes and uh, an extra shot of nectar? Yeah, I'm